This is going to be a Kenny Kirkland solo. Woo. What makes this solo great? Not to be confused with what makes this track great, although that's great too. <laughs> I don't know how they could get confused. That's right. So, first of all, I love Kenny. I love Kenny Kirkland. Sue me, okay? Be, be <laughs> simple and be a technician. You know <laughs> exactly. what I mean? Exactly. And just groove. I mean, this is gonna be so fun because there's so much, so many great things happening. Now, the solo hasn't even started yet, but he's always he's already doing something that's gonna make his solo great. So, I want to talk about this. It's very easy to just jump to the beginning and look. This is you know spoiler spoiler alert. This the piano solo is first, mm. so it could be like let's just skip to there. But you know what? We got time. It's Monday. You know what I'm saying? I'm with my boy, Adam, here. Bro, this is our show. We can do whatever we want. This is our show. I can do it. Exactly. So let's just talk about a couple things that he did there. So check out. And I played you guys the chords on the chordy there just so you could. This is a very simple tune harmonically. But it's to be noted that that sounds like an E major. And occasionally he might play that. We'll talk about that. But it's very. With a little bit of connotation of the flatted fifth, as it were. I'm sorry, the, the raised fifth. Raised fifth. My yeah. bad. Well, I guess actually, no, uh, flat and sixth. Flat and sixth. Because the fifth is still in there. What is that scale? That's a, that's an A melodic minor mode, yeah. right? There that, you go. By the way, that's such a great mode to work off of on that major, especially with this, because. Yeah. Look what else is happening there. Yep. It, it kind of keeps you in that. Oh. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Ooh, and even if you, the 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 big change kind of comes between that G natural and the G. Anyway, mm. the things that uh, let's just see if we can find it here. Again. Simple comping, but then he does a few little riffs. Yeah, so this is a little bit of foreshadowing too to what's going to happen later. And then that's a, just kind of open fifths and stuff, you know. Easy stuff, but just tasteful, correct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Can we can we play a little something simple? You know what I'm saying? That was my Did that you? was me. That was me. Oh, that was you. Oh, I was like, <laughs> I'd never heard that before. That was awesome. Thank See? you. Thank you. Man, thank Adam you. Manis is in the spirit. Are you serious? That was you. You're welcome. That was so awesome. You're man. welcome. You're welcome. That's gonna keep us from getting a copyright strike. I know. It's, I it's know. like a derivative, it's <laughs> like a derivative <laughs> work now. I wonder if playing along to this stuff actually affects that. That'd be great, man. Be great. Oh, so good. All okay. Right, all right. Keep it going. Keep it going. Sorry. I'll, I'll keep my dirty hands off it. That was good. Okay, I'm going to actually fast forward up to the solo. Is that okay? Sure. Because that's what we're here talking about. Stop calling me. I ain't got no time for you. Um, okay. There's a lot to talk about already. I'm, I'm sorry to even disturb it, but isn't there? I mean, 
that that sort of first course because there it's really a vamp yeah. o- o- over these courts. So we're not going to be talking about actual courses, but that's the first segmentation mainly because of what he's doing in terms of setting up the solo and what he's going to do melodically. If we hear the beginning of the solo. Okay, so when he starts, you know, he's not like dum, 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 the end of the melody. One, two, three, four. Bing. He's not like coming in on one. He's already, he's putting in that that kind of out of time, like I'm, I'm. it's a mysterious thing rhythmically. It's linking up. You know, there's a real interest there that he's going to follow up on. And in fact, if you listen to this whole chorus, everything is out of time, mm. kind of, mm-hmm. until he hits the very last phrase and he's like right in the groove. Check it out. I mean, there's a little bit of... Sparkles, the yeah. sparkles. And then here. But there it's very... Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, he's like right in there on that. He did go kind of going to the time before that. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is, in, it's not like he's out of time, out of time. Well, because his left hand, too. He's just kind of doing these sparkles around the one and the five. And when he... Then he's like, that. what's great about that is, too, that kind of defines the harmony. Again, yeah. Right? Like, so he's just kind of... And he gives it something kind of rhythmically can, assertive a little bit because again the changes are e major c major d major e major so if you hang out on that e and that b right yeah it works through all of it obviously yeah. so it's kind of can you hear, can you play it again I just want to hear what yep. he's because he's kind of hanging out on that e and the b and yep. then he, he plays it and I can't stress how important that very first note is it's just Yeah, setting that up. Still with... Yeah. Man, I'm loving that mode. I would never think to do that mode. Yeah, and you know what else I just realized on this? He's so... It's so like... um, uh, Like he goes... He goes out of that tenor region. Yeah. Which this is a great time. Look, pianists, d- don't sleep on the tenor version. I mean, the tenor version, the tenor range. Like, this is such a good time in the solo to set up what's going to come later. And so many pianists never go below middle C with their, with their, well, uh, they never go below middle with C with their they, right hand. And they never go above I know. high C. So it's like they're just in this two octave range for most everything. But there's a lot of music to be made on this keyboard. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He's back in the tenor. So right there, that's straight Kenny Kirkland. So that's what makes that great. I mean, how many times have we heard him do that? And it's nothing crazy, uh, you know, um, uh, harmonically or, mo- or melodically or anything. It's just right in the cut there. He's leaning on that a lot too. He's doing that. That's like the third time he's done this double stop here. Yep. Of E and B down low. It's a really great thing, especially if you're on a if you're at a keyboard, go do this really quick. You can get a really nice rhythmic thing, which he does so. And it's so great too, because you as you move through those chords, at any moment you've got to pull out your pocket. Yeah, yeah exactly. Totally, totally. Or is this, a, and this is another re- reason you got to connect the range of the instrument you're playing with what you're doing melodically and architecturally, because you've also got at any point, and he's going to do this. Don't, don't do it sloppy like that, but you know what I'm saying. Like, like you now when you move up, it means something as opposed to just you right. Know, so when you're down here, yeah. And you want to finish, and you want to put something on it after being down there, which he does. Yep. You know, he'll finish a phrase up there. That's very cool. Woo! Woo. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Is that a flat? Yeah. 
And and the way he did, he he kind of fakes out the the major third at first. The woman, he's like, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. he goes to it. You know, great. Let me take it back just a little bit. Did he do one of those? Yeah, better you but who by him. What am I do? Can you back it up a yep. little bit? Ah. There was something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woof. Again. Yep. That E. Thematic. E-B- Very thematic. Double stuff, yeah. That one. Some kind of diminished right? Some kind of I think it was like <laughs> it, was, it was like a D Yeah I think so One of those things Yep Diminish with the major seven. And you know what it is? Like, these things are so cool. And there's so many places to put them. But, like, what we can really talk about what makes the soul so great is the placement of it. And there's never, like, I don't think just one right answer. Like, this was great because he placed that diminished with the major seventh on this beat. It's all, like, situational. What did he play before? it? Like, how did it lay? Yeah, all of this little stuff. And then bring it up, it up here. This is all setting up so yeah. he can do some slick shit like... Yep. You know, that kind of thing. Six. Yeah. Those are the first ones he's done, right? And that's very, like, after all that, like, avoiding of the third, you've got, you know, that's a very, like, that's church, you know, pretty much kind of connotation of that. Mm. So when when he starts phrasing like this, this is just a manifestation of like Kenny Kirkland's eighth note, you know, or six or whatever these are, you know, the the it's really like the rhythmic kind of le- the way he lays on it that 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 delineates that kind of phrasing, you know. Beautiful man. I don't know if we can Keep explain it, it. Keep it going. Sorry. And this is like the, I think the first hinting of kind of, you know, a little bit of a Latin rhythm kind Oof. of, uh, or maybe almost even Afro-Cuban, but stretched out a little bit. Check it out. He's like, it's just a hint that. That's like, yeah. So that's like, that's an A flat. Try it. He throws that in numerous, not numerous, but several places on this solo. It's just like some, you know. But it's that thing too of like, you know, when you you've got something as primal and and basic and simple as a triad, you can take it totally out. Like the A flat is probably the most, the the least related to anything that's happening here. Yeah, I mean, you can consider that it's that over D thing. You yeah, know, A flat over D. Jeez, A flat to G flat. Come on. I mean, it, that might be just, there's no perfect way to do anything. But at that <laughs> moment, 
Yeah. What a what a beautiful solo. It's what a, a beautiful piece of, of art that is. Wow. It's so great. Um if you liked that Kenny Kirkland solo, give us give us a like. How about that? That's how you're gonna show how much you <laughs> What? Come on, that's just what I'm saying, man. You know. But I mean, I think you hit it on the nail on the head with the like at this moment. This solo sounds like it's live. Yeah. This is a studio session. Yeah. Now, it would be fun. We can check out, uh, we're not going to have time today, but we could check out a live, a couple, there's a couple of really good live versions of this one from um, Germany, one from Montreux that I was actually at the performance of live, and I, I still remember how Kenny played, Kenny Kirkland. Man. But the idea of like playing, a, I think, what makes the solo great? Okay, first and foremost, beyond the, you know, you know, the, 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 the where he lays in the middle of that longer phrase, those triads and all that kind of fun stuff is the kind of, you know, meandering story with confidence that he tells throughout this and the life force that he brings. This is very much a, a live improvisational kind of soul. This is not like he has all this slick stuff and he lays it out like oftentimes really good pianists will do on a studio session. Yeah. Especially if this was kind of I, I don't know if this was early of when they were playing it, but it certainly hadn't played it for 10 years. Well, this, this is everything that, you know, to answer Chris's question from before, what makes a what makes a solo great? And we were talking a lot about staying in the moment, you know, and, and this is that right. This yeah. is. Uh, in context to what is happening around him at the time, completely confident, you're right, and it is very much of the moment. That's what makes such a great, that's what's so great about improvising in general and, and what's so great about jazz specifically is that it's it's all about the moment where the thing happened. And so yeah. I think it's one of the things I'm, I'm sorry, I'm feeling very nostalgic today for live music. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm yeah, just I know, really, I'm missing. You're a little forlorn, but you're a little, you're, you're, you're inspired, but you're perspiring. I'm not going to uh, cry, <laughs> but <laughs> no, I do feel, I really, I kind of miss playing live for people and I miss hearing people live. Like I, I miss, I miss, I miss sharing those, those ephemeral moments, yep. you know what I mean? With, with an audience and as an audience. So. Well, and that's why a solo like this is so great. They, they can take you as close as you can get to uh, that that feeling of playing live or sitting you know i mean i remember like sitting with um at the village vanguard and hearing bobby hutcherson play like right in front of him and like just being transformed to the point where i was like i'm gonna never forget this joe henderson i remember seeing him live in france one time playing solos i mean like those moments but you have that in the recording it's it's harder to do it on a studio recording you can capture some live recordings that are really great and that's a snapshot in time but this is like a this solo what makes it so great this is like a living breathing thing that like is never gonna die it is very exciting And also, man, his solo, it's like percolating. You know, this is not like a solo that's like you build up, you build up, and then it's the end. It's it's a very patient, and it's got a, it's like percolating. It's, what a vibe. You know what I mean? And it, that fits. This is an important point. When you're soloing over a vamp, which is what this is, just three, it's four-bar vamp. Two, three, four. Three, right? Four-bar. And it just keeps repeating that. So you're, you're soloing over a vamp. So it, you... You work a lot harder by trying to turn that into a long form because it's not. So what Kenny does on this, Kenny Kirkland, like he takes what the tunes give him. He's like, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's almost like waves coming in on the beach. You know, they just like keep coming. Some of them are a little bit more, but they just keep coming. You're not building up for this big tidal wave and then it's over. It's just, it's coming in and then you're, it's percolating. And he, well, he does it with that fourth to the third and. Then, you know, in so many just great ways that he does it. And then he lets it, the simmering and in between the waves is like he's always coming back to playing in and out with 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 Nat Reeves on bass as well. Mm. Man, well, he captured the vibe of the tune perfectly. I think your idea of simmering, it just fits with that that vamp. Yeah. You know, it fits with that vibe. So yeah. awesome.